Hi, everyone. It's Emily and Jamie. Shocker. <laughs> I do love that. No matter what our moods are before we start the podcast, we just smile and change it on a dime. How would you describe your mood this morning? <laughs> I'm beyond stress. Like, I need a stressful bubble up in here in maps. I I need the day to be like 48 hours long, Mm -hmm. like Friday to be 48 hours long. And that's not how the world works. Y'all know we're stressed because we're, (laughs) while we celebrated our 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 launch already, (laughs) we've been celebrating it, recording this, but we're still living in it. We're still editing emails and fixing bugs and. I you know what I was um this is literally where I was at yesterday googling which maybe I should have stopped googling and actually like done work and I wouldn't have felt as stressed you today googling? I googled what is <laughs> I haven't even told you this yet and I can't wait for your reaction oh my god I googled um what is the longest animal gestation <laughs> wait what <laughs> oh because you want to use that is it a giraffe no remember when you were pregnant with April I, the so I was pregnant and so was this famous giraffe April April the giraffe right April the giraffe yeah and, and she was all How of the news the giraffe's gestation Let me look try. it up because so this this giraffe had the, the longest pregnancy ever and they just kept the waiting news. because they didn't know when the giraffe right. got pregnant right. so they were like waiting for this baby and my pregnancy was grace, obviously it? it was with grace yeah was the regular month of a pregnancy <laughs> right 38 weeks. In fact, I did deliver a little early, but the nurses at the hospital were calling me April the giraffe because her pregnancy the giraffe is 15, 15 months. months. Cause it was the longest flipping pregnancy. Cause I tortured everybody on a daily She's basis. So Cause sick. I was so sick. I had hyperemesis and I just people with true hyperemesis. Like I empathize with you, but we're miserable to be around yeah. because we're miserable. Yeah. Anyway, so you were Googling. So I was Googling it because I thought that it was a giraffe because of April, April the giraffe. The giraffe. Uh, for the record, the giraffe delivered before you, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so messed up. Wait, is that even possible? Yes. Because yeah, I'm because they didn't know how long. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, so anyway, when I looked this up yesterday, I was Googling what is the longest animal gestation. And it's an it's elephant. Nurture by nap. <laughs> nurture by nap. <laughs> and it's 22 months. And that is what I was trying to oh compare. My God. To. We are like I was trying to compare like how long this process has been. Can you friggin' imagine being pregnant for 22 months? I mean, if it's as painful as this process has <laughs> been, no. <laughs> I, it's I I so the reason why I was all right, I'm just gonna say this one thing because this is not the email that's gonna go out. I just changed the email, but um <laughs> I will say this one thing. I was Googling it because we got a message from one of the, so we have this new um, development team who's getting us to the finish line for our website, for the web app. And, um, and they're awesome. I love this team. Yeah, and there's one great. woman on it who I love. She's our project manager. She's been amazing. And she sent us a message yesterday about how um, there, there's, there's this European tradition around like, essentially what we celebrate here in the States is like May Day, but we don't really celebrate it. But like, mm-hmm. In uh, like European countries, especially like Ireland, Scotland, they celebrate the first of May. It's like this huge celebration because it's like the Earth's flowering season and a rebirth, and like we're celebrating like you know the the Earth and like the world being yeah. fertile, and um, and it's like the opposite of like essentially what happens in uh, you know November first, like the Halloween, right? Where like things are dying, right? Mm-hmm. And so she sent this message and she was like, I just, I, I thought of this today and I thought of you and like what, and she's like, that's so nice. I know. And like, what a wonderful time. I know this has been a long process, but what a wonderful day on May 1st to be launching, like relaunching naps. And it's so true. So then like, you know, I was bringing it back to the birth and rebirth, which is where I went with the gestation. But... So you had a positive spiral in your Google search last No, no, night. yeah, it was a good spiral. <laughs> but I was I was trying to find a gestation that compared to how long we've been building this for. While you were Googling animals, I was reading There is still a good transition here. Looking for errors in them and my eyes are bleeding. And so if you have spelling errors or little things <laughs> in your confirmation emails and your follow-up emails just laugh when you see them and be like because Emily did that and that's why <laughs> but so, speaking of emails can, should we shift into the topic for today because yeah um we got an email last week 
this week. By the way, when like things feel hard here, we tend to receive an email from a client <clears throat> or a text or something. Yeah. And this happens, like could happen a few times in a week or once in a, in a week or once in a month. It just depends, right? Yeah. But shit felt hard and we got this email. Yeah. I do want you all to know that when you send us emails like this, Emily and I always get them. It doesn't matter what email address you send them to, mm -hmm. they get forwarded to us. And I have a folder in my email called Positive Vibes. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm having a bad day, I click on that folder and I read these emails. So like the, this shit matters. Like I just want you guys to know. And Emily and I are grateful for it. So want me to read the email and then we can talk about Yes, because we are going to read it. We're going to read it in a way. <laughs> I'm getting glasses. We're going we're gonna to read I'm it. Gonna, yeah, you're going to identify who this, this person yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, you will. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just wanted to send along a huge thank you to your team. My son turns one this week and throughout all of the changes, highs, uh, chat, I'm sorry. Let's start over. <laughs> I just wanted to send <laughs> along a huge thank you to your team. Who glasses now? Okay. My son turns one this week and throughout all of the changes, highs and lows this year, naps has been a steady force and a beacon of support for me. My breastfeeding journey started off rocky, but thanks to your angel LCs and online resources, I have officially made it to my goal of nursing my baby for one year. In addition to breastfeeding, your daily content makes me laugh and reminds me not to take things so seriously. Emily, I am so grateful for you for your support when you helped explain the elements of my labor once I finally had the mental space to process the trauma. And Jamie, thank you for talking about postpartum wellness groups so much. <clears throat> this is where I found my therapist to support me over the last year. Thanks again for all you do. I will forever be grateful to, to NAPS. Yours truly, one of our NAPS clients. <laughs> Honestly, like emails like this just are a breath of fresh air because it's like, oh, Okay, it's a reminder that we are not just doing what we love and but we're help we're helping people in the way that we really want to help people. Yeah. So I think what's really cool about it is that patients like this or clients like this often will come to us closer to a year. It's almost like it's that milestone, it's that first birthday, and that is finally the time where like hopefully your baby is sleeping through the night and you're been back at work for a while and like I feel like you are out of the weeds is probably like not the best way to describe it but I think it's uh, I think that birthdays are a point of transition and reflection yes. with people yes so I think a lot of and I think a lot of parents especially women when they hit that one year mark mm -hmm. you know celebrating their baby's first birthday yeah I do think a lot of parents have this moment of reflection of like holy shit right and you look back at not just that whole first year right if you really keep going the whole pregnancy totally. process no. too yeah. and that's essentially almost right. two years right? right and that's a long time right the funny thing about not the funny thing the the thing about this particular client um but also many of our clients mm -hmm. is we first met this person when she came to boot camp mm -hmm. and so it's i i feel like when we think about um why, and I know we've talked about boot camp recently, but like why boot camp is so important to us. Right. It's not just about the content that we've created for it, right? Like, you know, giving people what they want, but also mixing in the things that we know that they need. Totally. Which we've talked about a bunch, but it is also this like starting off point of yeah. our relationship with them, whether they're aware of it or not. They're, and they're they're definitely not no. right. So like boot camps this weekend. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm yeah. coming on Saturday. It's again in July through throughout the whole year, so you yeah. can look them up. But I know for a fact because I know a few people coming. They're excited. They got their notes in the mail. They got their supplies for the weekend, and they're eager to like learn all of the good things. And so they're excited for the weekend. Totally. And I'm excited, but in such a different way. Totally. Because for me, I'm like I'm gonna get on camera this weekend. And to make them laugh. Try to make them laugh. laugh. Yeah. Try to give them content. But for me, it's like back in the delivery room in a yeah. quick amount of time, but in a virtual experience, I want to create trust. Create trust because yeah. I know I'm going to see them again. And yeah. that's what's exciting for me. Yeah. I know I'm going to see them like in my new mom support group or on the nurture by naps board that first week home when breastfeeding is hard or when they're trying to go back to work. I just, I'll see them again. Yeah. And they don't know that. But I do. I know. <laughs> I think the other piece of it too is that 
um, it's the first step in like, in that like personalized approach. Like mm-hmm. y- you and I and our whole team care so much. Like you were just saying, you know, I'm going to see them again. We like looked at the statistics yeah, around like how, who, you know, how often we actually see people again after boot camp. I mean, it's like 90%, truly the statistic was 90% of people who take boot camp do another again. service with us, right? right? That could be multiple services. That could be one service, but anywhere from lactation to mm-hmm. nurture to a uh, support group, whatever, yeah. right? And then many people, multiple things, right? Um, but, but th- there's this other element of it for me that I think is exciting as it relates to boot camp. is it is like that personalized approach to care mm-hmm. in the sense of like, yeah, we're educating you in the, you know, on the things that you need to know as a group. Right. But, but we recognize everyone as their own individual, which is why the topics aren't a, a, a generalization that everybody's going to breastfeed. Mm-hmm. It's not a generalization that everybody's going to have a vaginal delivery. Yeah. Right. And then I think that sets the stage for like, just when you were talking, you said, you know, when, when we see you again, like maybe it's on the nurture board in that first week home. Right. Like it made me think of this. We literally just had a client who came to boot camp, just had her first baby, was um, while she was in the hospital, put in a request mm-hmm. for a lactation consult. Smart lady. Yep. <laughs> we booked that lactation consult for like, I, I want to say it was like, she requested it on a Friday. The visit was for a Monday. She got discharged home. Um, I think she got discharged home that day, Friday, mm-hmm. right? She wrote on the message. She was a nurture member because she did her like two week trial following boot camp. Yeah. Stayed in the membership. She wrote on the message board that Saturday. And it was something to the effect of like, I breastfeeding was going really well in the hospital. It's not going well anymore. I haven't been able to get my baby to latch or feed since five o'clock this morning. Like every time I tried, the baby just cries and then falls asleep. And I saw them, she sent it in it, call it like seven o'clock at night. I I saw it at like seven 30 on a Saturday night. Like, this is what we do, you guys. And if you have a newborn and you've had kids, you know that if something's hard on a Saturday with a newborn, you cannot wait till Monday. No. That's way too, it's really when you're in it like that, like, right. oh my God. And your provider, whatever the scenario was, their first response was to ask us on the message board. Now, do, you know, is there an element here where it's like, okay, if there's like an emergency, I actually need you to, you know, reach out to your provider. Totally. But like, I saw this message and, <laughs> and I called her. I called her at 7 30 on a Saturday. I literally started tearing up when Jamie told me this story the next day because I was just like, that was just so kind. But it was one of those <laughs> scenarios where like I, I knew what was happening as a medical professional. Mm-hmm. I knew what was happening as a mom. Yep. Right. And I was like, going to send it, those people into the night like that? No. 7 like, p.m. That night would have no. been a. Well, it's not the emergency. They would have ended up. This person would I have already ended knew, up. In the I knew room. that for yeah. as a medical professional, right? Right. I called them. I was on the phone with them for thirteen minutes. Yeah, her and her husband. Right. And I was just like, "Hey, how are you doing?" <laughs> she was like, "Is that <laughs> Jamie?" I was like, "Hey, it's Jamie from now." No, I don't. I don't want to set an unrealistic expectation. Here. I do not call everybody. Who I'm gonna put Jamie's board. cell phone in the show notes, everybody. Okay, <laughs> you just text or call her. <laughs> but I was like, "Hey, it's Jamie from Naps. How you doing?" Aww. He was like, "I think I'm better now." <laughs> oh God! I was like, "Good. I have a plan for you. Can you put me on speaker so your I partner recognize your voice from Instagram? <laughs> if your partner hears the plan." Oh, I um, love putting the speakerphone on. Yeah, like she's putting the baby sleeping people, on her chest. Right. But anyway. <laughs> Um, but anyway, gave them a plan for the night. Like they, they got through the night. I checked in with her the next day, like lactation consultant came on Monday. Um, but like, I, I'm, you know, I feel like we're reading this email. We're telling these stories because this isn't, <laughs> this isn't a, what we're doing over here Yeah, is not about like trying to make generalizations and educate people in a way where it's a one size fits all. Yeah. Like, I think what's really cool about everything that we offer from boot camp to lactation consults, to sleep training, to starting solids, to how to deal with your, you know, tantrums. Dickhead, I was just going to say dickhead toddlers. So there you go. You said it nicer. I said, I, I called the dog a dick the other day when, when I was walking her speaking a dickhead. Oh yeah. And my kids were like, what's a dick? No, I don't like when you call Maisie a dick. Anyway. 
We were in public walking yeah. home from in Charlestown by the monument and multiple people heard my kids saying the ICK. <laughs> Good thing we spelt it that time after we just said, said it. Like, like we're in yeah. well, was that? Okay, anyway, you just made me think of that because like you rarely use that word. I know. Did. I know. Did I totally derail your thoughts? I've been using it a lot this week, probably to maybe <laughs> not the but... No, you didn't derail my thoughts. I was just saying, like, it doesn't matter what we're talking about. I like we we you and I and everybody in our team are nurses and like we're trained as nurses to like ask a lot of questions mm -hmm. and like get to know you as the patient first yeah we're not trained as nurses to come in and be like oh I read your chart this is what's wrong but that's the nursing that's how that's that's the nursing model like totally. that's how we were educated that's what we were taught totally it's like um that that ability to sit down and just talk to a like before you totally. even try to guess what's wrong just to talk to somebody yeah and hear the whole story right yeah even really if they funny. have an idea of what's going on if anybody's done a call with me I, I know that it's not annoying like because I know that I ask you guys questions and you want me to and you answer the questions right but like if you heard me talking to a patient like I can see how some people would be like why is she talking to somebody like that and not just like telling them what to do yeah. because every time I talk to somebody I ask them like at a minimum five questions, usually like 10 or 12. Right. Like I'll read what they want to talk about and I'll be like, okay, like how about you explain to me where you're at now? And then yeah. as they talk, I'm like, okay, clarifying question. Okay, what about this? Okay, have you considered this? Like yeah. I ask a lot of questions and I tell them, I'm like, I am going to ask you a lot of questions to start this conversation because like I just want to like really understand what's going on totally. for you. Physically, I really want to understand what's going on with you mentally. And like, mm -hmm. and then I want to take all that information that, uh, that you give me. And then I want, pro I'm probably right. going to give you two to three options. Yeah. And I, I can point you in a direction if you need me to do that. Like I'll often totally. say like, do you want me to tell you what I would tell my sister to do? Yeah. Like these are your options, but do you want me to tell you what I would tell my sister to do? Right. Right. Um, but like, but that reasons. is. But that is the nursing care model. Right. And that is how all of our programs are set up. Yep. It it like that's that that's it with that model in mind. And I think that um I don't know. I I don't know I don't know what the point of this rant is, but I, I mean, mean it's we've just... gone a lot of places, but I think truly that it's wherever we see you. Yeah. Wherever we see you in the journey, whether we give a shit. Yeah, whether it's pre-baby boot camp or once the baby's here yeah. up into the toddler years. That is the care that you're always going to get. Yeah. And yeah. so, and the other point was thanks for the emails because they're I know. really lovely. I know. Yeah. Please don't stop sending those emails. Yeah. Or if it's you think nice... it's dumb to send the email, it's never dumb. You, you don't, right. You don't understand what it means to us. Yeah. So nice reminder that when we're 22 months pregnant, like an elephant right now, to just keep take going, a deep breath. take a deep breath. Because even though it's hard, we're doing something good. Yeah, it's totally so worth thanks it. Thanks for the reminder. Okay. All right. See some of you at boot camp in July. <laughs> <laughs> Sign up for July. Sign up for July. We'll see, the you there. Yeah. see you there if you're pregnant and listening. All right. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye.